Hello, in this video, I'm going to see if I can come up with a new name for this YouTube channel, because I need a new name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate one using an algorithm called a Markov chain. Now, if you watched the previous video, then I spent a lot of time talking about what a Markov chain is and building the code for a Markov chain from scratch. One thing I didn't do, do however, which this video will focus on, is how to use a Markov chain to generate a short phrase. So in this sense, what I'm going to feed into the Markov chain is many, many examples of that short phrase. So you could use city names or character names or thesis title ideas or course title ideas. I'm thinking of like, like school stuff because that's what, where my brain is at. But you know, YouTube channel names. So um, here are a bunch of uh, YouTube channel names that came in suggested from the viewers through a Google form. Now I could actually connect to the Google form directly and I have an example that shows you how to do that. But I think for right now, for simplicity's sake, this is just in a text file called names.txt. So I'm going to go to the Markov chain code. No longer do I want to have the hard-coded text about the unicorn or the theremin. <laughs> Instead, what I want to do is I'm going to make a variable called names. I'm going to add the preload function. So in P5, the preload function is a function where I can preload data files like images, sounds, other, and other kinds of data files. And I'm going to say names equals load strings names.txt. So if I do this, and I'm just going to say console log names, I'm going to get lots of weird errors because I took out a bunch of other things. Um, I should see, ooh, I don't see any, oh yeah, this I do. I'm going to see this array of all of the, I have an array of all the names that people suggested. And there's some other errors. So now what I need to do is I need to do this, so this ngrams, remember this ngrams variable stores the table of everything. So what I need to do is instead of having one piece of text that I feed into the model, the ngram table, um, the Barkov model table thing, <laughs> let's call it, <laughs> um, I need to do that through a loop. So what I need to do is I need to put an outer loop. So I'm going to say uh, for var j equals 0, j is less than names.length, j++. Plus plus. And I'm going to put a loop around all of this. And then what I'm going to do is this inner loop is the thing that adds stuff to the ngrams model. What I'm going to do is say var text equals names index i. So I'm going to add each line from that text file one at a time to the model. The reason why I want to do this is I want all of that to be part of the possi possibilities. However, one thing that's not built into my code is, well, how does a name begin? A name could begin with C-O-D, J-O-Y, C-O-D, T-H-E, O-D-E, W-O-N. So I want to keep a separate list of actual possible beginnings for the generation process. So on the one hand, I'm kind of done here. Like it, um, the thing that won't work, let me run this. Uh, cannot lead, read property length of undefined, sketch.js line 17. Let's see what the error is. Uh, ah, hmm. Oh, names index J. Boy, that's bad. And J++. So remember, the outer loop is J. So I'm looking at each. There is no I. So that worked. And you can see I'm getting a nice big list uh, with all the sort of possibilities. That table is working. If I hit generate, though, I'm going to have an error. And that error is txt is not defined. Because how I was able to, how I started the generator was with just the first three letters or whatever the order is of that seed phrase. Now what I think that would make sense to do is I need to, I want to create, I'm going to call it beginnings. I don't know if I've mentioned this, by the way, that this most of the, all the code that I'm writing is based on Python code written by Alison Parrish. And I'll make sure to credit her in both the previous video and this one. I guess I'm mentioning it now. I should have mentioned it in the first one. Um, so thank you, Alison, for that code that at some point I looked at a couple of years ago when I first started doing this stuff. Um, OK. I, um, so I, that was implanted in my head two years ago, and it's coming out right now, I guess. There might be some differences. <laughs> Never mind. OK. So I, what I want to do is have an array uh, 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 called beginnings, which are what are the possible beginnings? So each time I look at a name, the first gram is a possible beginning. So if, if i equals 0, beginnings dot push gram. So I want to keep track of an extra list of all the possible beginnings. Meaning, here is the table of all of the n-grams and possible outcomes. And if I look at beginnings, 
Here is an array of all of the possible ways that a name could begin. And again, there's redundancy here. And why are they all two characters instead of three? Oh, do, my n must be two. The n is two. OK, that's right. Um, I was going to start with three. So if I do this again and hit beginnings, we can see, yeah. So these are all the possible ways that a name could begin. And there's redundancy in there. But I like that, because I want my names to begin with the same probabilities as my input data. So now what I'm going to do is down here, the current gram just needs, I just need to pick a random beginning. So random beginnings. So I just pick a random beginning, and that's where I start. And then I let the algorithm just go. So let's run it and see what I get. Coding codes and unicolors, coding time, rainbows, Schiffman's rainbow coding, Haradi's and disk spectrum of colored orange, yellow code, Kitchion, that in that. Co so you can see, have we found something yet? I think, first of all, a couple things. One is I should probably limit the name to about maybe 15 characters. I don't know, maybe let's limit it to 20. And uh, maybe let's make the order two because it's making too much sense. <laughs> coding blander siande. Unicoding happy recode I. Coding pitchy code cod. The kiater drogame. Coding ing happy erdin. Ode thatian rating C. So you can see here that this is working, but what the order is is really going to affect, um, affect the sort of the this dot show. Coding balloon, coding meteorolo meteorological P, happy jumpy dancy codes and. So uh, that order might be too high. I might only be getting literal, the sort of literal names. And another thing here to point out is this would be much more probably interesting if I had a data set of 100,000 names that I could use. Um, you know, something you might try is to, you know, what's your input data? <laughs> Come up with what the thing you're trying to name, see if you can find a really big data set. Maybe have a slider where you can adjust the order. So the, the user can actually pick what that order is um, as, uh, as the user is generating text from it. So I don't know if we've come up. <laughs> I really thought that at the end of this video, I'd be able to do this. And now the new name of this channel is, you know, let's just say it's, OK, hold on. Let's make the order three. That's kind of in between. Let's just say it's for the rest of today, the name of this channel is, drum roll. Joy of light appearing D. Hashtag joy of light appearing D. <laughs> See you all in another video. I have some more stuff that I need to talk about, which is looking at uh, generating Markov chains for longer pieces of text, perhaps, as well as uh, on the word level, I think would be worth taking a look at as well. Okay.